Hats. We all wear many, many hats. My goodness, if I was paid each time one of us wore a different hat, I'd be a very wealthy lady. But of course, I'm speaking metaphorically. And today I'm here, I'm wearing two hats, one as an artist and one as an entrepreneur. And I'm here to talk about the uncomfortable space, the uncomfortable space between art and entrepreneurism. What is that uncomfortable space? Is it a compromise? Well, it's the place where the magic can happen. I'll get back to that more later. When I was growing up, all I ever wanted to do was sing, to be a singer and a musician. I was absolutely obsessed. I had an inner diva, but the trouble was I was painfully shy. I was a walking contradiction, an introvert extrovert. But I didn't let that stop me too much. I still was obsessed with music, so all I could think about was getting my GCSE music, my A-level music, and getting myself to Queen's University Belfast to do my music degree, all of which I did. And I arrived at Queen's, and it was perfect. I loved it. I met my partner, Kieran, and we befriended one of our favorite lecturers there at the time, Dr. Bob Gilmore. We found out then that Bob was leaving Queen's and going to a new post in England. So before long, I'd realized I'd agreed to up sticks with Kieran and Bob and the three of us quite literally in a van together heading off to the southwest of England. And so we arrived at Dartington College of Arts. And Dartington College of Arts is a very unique place, renowned for its radical teaching and practice-based research. I would never be the same again. Attending art school is both a blessing and a curse. This is where my journey into the uncomfortable space really began. You see, at Dartington, we were asked to read books like Ways of Seeing by John Berger. John Berger is a well-known philosopher of art. And studying his book changed me irreversibly. This book made you question the act of looking, the simple act of the gaze, and all the multi-layers of meanings and the aesthetics of beauty behind the image. So I finished my undergraduate degree and what next? Well, my partner and my friends were all talking about their postgraduate research, so of course I thought to myself, I better do that too. A kind of intellectual peer pressure, if you like. I applied and was successful. I got the bursary for the part-time scholarship, but it didn't pay me a wage. It didn't pay any teaching hours, nor were there grants. So, of course, there's still an uncomfortable space. As the next year or two rolled by, I started to feel increasingly more uncomfortable with the realization that I was harboring a little secret. And that secret was I wanted to make some money. So, before long, after much deliberation with Kieran, we relocated to Belfast. Fast forward a few years, we've got married, we've started a family. And of course, for those few years, being a parent to my little children was the most important job. But what it did afford me was time. Time to think, to soul search and research what would it be that I could do to be a creative person and make a living. And then I had the Eureka moment. And the Eureka moment was this. I was simply flicking through fashion magazines one day when I came across an editorial spread with the most exquisite millinery with hats by the world's most incredible milliner, in my view, Philip Tracy, an Irishman from County Galway. His hats were so special, I'd never seen anything like it. I was moved by them. It's like getting back to the John Berger book, Ways of Seeing. I was seeing depth in these images, the likes of which I'd never felt before. I was looking at those images and saying to myself, how did he do that? You know, how is that stain on her head? What is it made from? And I couldn't get those images out of my head. I can see them to this day, in fact. The eureka moment wasn't that there and then I decided, right, that's it. The solution is I'll make hats, I'll make some money making hats, and everything will be fine. No, it's not as straightforward as that. This is the uncomfortable space. You see, the art school training just never leaves you, I find. Instead of concentrating on making 
beautiful classic Mother of the Bride hats and wedding hats, I began to take on the concept of making a hat collection as an art project. I started using experimental techniques, perspex, thermoplastics, laser cutting, using digital design software, all manner of things to create a body of work that I was proud of. So did that matter? Yes and no. Jane Pearson, who's a Welsh fashion designer, spotted my Perspex hat collection and she loved it. She used it in her fashion film. She was a regular at London Fashion Week. She brought me to London, introduced me to her fashion PR company. They took me on board. I then had my own London Fashion Week stand the following year. And for a few years, I felt utterly fulfilled and was in complete joy at the hats that I was making in an artistic sense. But did I sell lots of them and make loads of money? No. So there are two currencies here. One is the value and artistic appreciation and integrity of your work. The other value is monetary. I succeeded in one at that time, but not quite the other. And this is the uncomfortable space. This is the I want to make money versus I want to make art conversation. It's that push and pull, the everyday struggle that you as an artist have to deal with. You want to make your work, but you still need to pay the bills. We've all heard of the cliche of the starving artist, right? And that cliche is still around today. And I've asked myself why. Is it because the artists themselves are afraid of selling out? Are they afraid that by commercializing their art, they will in some way be compromising their art? Are they perhaps a bit like myself, a victim of art school where you're overthinking things a bit too much? Quite possibly all of the above. I think it's important at this point to stress that I'm not suggesting for a moment that you need to have been to art school in order to be a good artist or a fantastic artist. Not in the slightest, that would be ridiculous. And neither am I bashing art school. I will, of course, wholeheartedly defend the right to anyone to access arts education should they see fit, because it's the most precious time to evolve as a creator, a maker, a thinker. Perhaps now, 2021, as we emerge from the pandemic, I believe we're in the midst of a paradigm shift. This is a shift in worldview, in valuing the arts. Is this our time then to be more entrepreneurial, to be entrepreneurial? in fact? I really do believe so. I think that in the future, the very near future, the arts will no longer be the poor relation. The world at large has noticed the effects of a limited access to the arts and cultural sector during this pandemic. We've missed the simple things in life from the singer-songwriter who sings in your local restaurant on a Sunday afternoon, right through to the large stadium concerts that we so sorely miss. We've had no access to our museums and our galleries. We've missed out on art workshops and art therapies. Even some of us have wanted to visit their local milliner to get a fancy hat for their daughter's wedding, and that's been denied too. So my advice to any artist like myself who's evolving through this uncomfortable space is, firstly, make the art that you want to make, unapologetically, no compromises. Immerse yourself in your practice, be a master of it. Diversify and collaborate for sure, whatever it is that you want to do, but enjoy it and figure out what it is that makes you tick because it's only in that moment that you will be able to then monetize your art, I believe. You will be comfortable with taking little segments, the little sparkles of your work and sharing that with people, whether it's a service you provide or whether it's a piece of work that you will then sell on. There will be days when you just wanna make pretty things but the tax return needs to be filed. There will be other days when you're really time poor, you want to work on this body of work that you've got but the customer's orders need finished first. That is the uncomfortable space. Work through it. Feel that discomfort because the pride of making your art, your living, will push through. Embrace the uncomfortable space. <laughs>